Yo, what's up guys, Grim here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how worth it is to do your ultimatums in high tier maps. So I ran 100 maps with ultimatums on it, and I've got the loot just from the ultimatums here. We counted the loot from the windows, and we also counted the loot from the explosion, and of course, we full cleared them all. Quick point, we actually did get one trial master in this test. Um, we've got my glimpse of chaos here which is pretty cool and he offered me two annulment orbs on the 10th wave if you're interested so that's pretty cool so again a hundred uh different ultimatums all stacked into these one two loot tabs here and we're going to take a look at how much we earned what that kind of looks like on the breakdown and then we're going to circle back around and talk about how we can min max ultimatum and ultimately if it's actually worth your time to do in the end game so first of all we need a little bit of a comparison so in my 100 maps i was doing i was actually testing breach at the same time as doing the ultimatums and i separated the loot and i think it's a fairly good comparison to compare how much i made in terms of profit doing my normal mapping with a pretty decent mapping strategy versus doing the ultimatums so in my actual test there i made about 42 chaos a profit doing my breach maps after everything sold and all of the trash was taken out so 42 chaos profit now in my ultimatums here if i was to sell everything including some of the less desirable items to sell you know like div cards essences and stuff like that um, i actually made 1700 chaos profit um, you know because you know they're pretty much free i was piggybacking on the maps i was already running and doing the ultimatums is pretty much just net profit which is pretty cool so 1700 so if i actually calculate that um, by doing the ultimatums uh, i actually did in fact make about 40 percent more profit just by doing them if i was to sell everything now if you take a look here, we've got all the really nice and juicy things to sell in one tab here. Uh, and then we have all the not so juicy things here to sell. And of course, there are contracts in here, which is going to pump the numbers up a little bit as well. And there's also some delirious maps, which I got here, which are also going to pump up the numbers a little bit as well, because people do like to buy the delirious maps and run them. I think they sell for about 20 C per layer of delirium, uh, which is actually pretty reasonable in terms of, you know, how much they cost um, so pretty awesome there but overall if we take out the trash which you're not generally going to sell here like the you know all this garbage um, we'll take a look at how much we can expect to make then and we'll readjust the calculation um, to kind of make sure that we're only selling stuff which we would realistically sell all right let's take a look here uh, make sure we get the right tab here we do uh, let's do a quick refresh and we'll take a look so fetching tab here we go now we're down to 1441 so let's do the redo the calculation um so we got uh 14.4 on a map by map basis um divided by 42 now it's about 34 percent increased profit now that's still pretty decent so you're making 34 percent more money in your maps if you were doing a competitive mapping strategy like the breach one that i was doing over here i think that's a fairly compelling um, number now the thing that makes this actually particularly good is if you're not doing a competitive mapping strategy let's say you're just doing alk and go you're just chilling out doing your atlas you know cruising around well suddenly this actually is probably going to be a considerable boon for you because you know normally you're used to getting you know like one or two chaos per map maybe profit now you're getting a lot of chaos profit you're getting 14 c on average profit per map that is a big deal for most players so if you're just cruising around chilling out you know having a good time ultimatum is one of the most rewarding lead mechanics there is right up there with ritual and some others as well for a quick comparison it was about 15 chaos on average that you would make per map in the ritually when i did a similar test back then and ultimatum is fairly in line with that keeping in mind though i didn't get any exalt drops and or anything crazy i feel like i got a pretty average run um so i think that it's fairly safe to assume that you're going to get around the 15 chaos point in terms of value which i think is pretty damn good for most players and i would say that it's pretty rewarding in general now let's get into the nitty-gritty of it though because when you're doing your ultimatums you will probably notice that these start to take a considerable amount of time when you encounter the survival encounters and also the stone circle encounters if you've got a fairly decent build you'll notice that the slay monsters and the defend encounters you can complete in a record time like each wave takes just a few seconds and you can blow through an ultimatum in under a minute now that is not true for the others it takes multiple minutes to be able to do a stone circle or survival and when 
when you get really high in kind of terms of like mapping kind of speed and stuff like that, well, now suddenly there is some sort of a decision to be made whether or not you want to do these ultimatums. Because as I mentioned, you know, 42 chaos profit uh, in the mapping strategy I was doing, well, if you can do a whole nother map in the time you could do a survival ultimatum, well, now you have a serious dilemma on your hands. Do you do another map or do you do the ultimatum? Well, I think it's fairly simple. It really does just depend on how fast you can do maps and how effective your mapping strategy is. You know, if ultimatum is kind of like more than double your um, kind of currency that you're getting in a map, you should continue to do it. Uh, it's only when it kind of really starts to tip that scale into the, oh man, is this really worth a territory that you should really start to think about it. And that is kind of where I was at that point in my uh, my breach mapping kind of scenario. I think that in my opinion, uh, moving forward, you know, if I was doing a highly competitive mapping strategy, for example, you know, Harbingers in Valda's Rest with, you know, the Watchstones and all sorts of stuff like that, I would probably uh, opt to skip the stone circles and survival ultimatums, and then I would actually go for the, the slay monsters and defend, because I think the slay monsters and defend are incredibly rewarding for the amount of time they take. They're probably one of the most rewarding lead mechanics currently in the game. Uh, when you compare it to other things, it's actually ridiculous how good they are, because you can complete them so fast. Now, that isn't the case, obviously, with the stone circles and the survival, but as I mentioned, there is still a case for them. And this is also not factoring in any sort of other outside influences. For example, if you run Nemesis currency or something like that, or, or you know, um, Delirium orbs or something like that, that's going to vastly improve the quality and the value of ultimatums in your map. Um, so closing thoughts right now is, are ultimatums worth it to run in your maps? For pretty much everybody, I would say absolutely yes, unless you've got some crazy Atlas strategy going on and your character is really, really, really fast. Um, pretty much it's going to be worth it to run every single ultimatum you encounter and really try and max out those waves. I think there's something to be said for p potentially skipping the um, stone circle and survival once you hit that really, really high investment point in your character and you're moving so quickly and you know, you're really feeling like they're taking a bit of time. But outside of that, I think ultimatums are incredibly worth it. And you know, to kind of just go over a few highlights here, you know, we did get, you know, a prime alchemic resonator, absolute boatload of currency here. Um, I'm a big fan of the fact that they can drop these zone um, kind of cards. So if you're magic fighting and for example, a tower, um, you know, that's really, really good. Um, that you can start dropping nurses. They have massive amounts of monsters in there, so you can really stack up that quantity. I think there's a lot of stuff that you can do with the ultimatum mechanic, which really does expand upon the whole loot window that it has. I think it's a great source of just loot in general, and uh, it was featured pretty heavily in my six socket strategy, and a lot of people have gone on to have a lot of success with that, just leveraging the, the ultimatum and the amount of monsters in it. So I think overall, ultimatum, fantastically mechanic. I'd like to see the stone circles and survival somehow maybe a little bit quicker or something like that. I don't know, but that's just my personal preference. I think the lead mechanic is fine how it is and it's extremely rewarding for most people who are doing it. So with all that said, guys, hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.